Hello everyone, this is Suja. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I want to discuss the title of this video. <laughs> it's called The Eternal Game, right? Fun title, really interesting title. The greatest title alive. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So what is The Eternal Game, right? Um, so if you look at religious people, they have this idea, a very interesting idea. Every person on this planet is not aware of this idea is, okay, you live, then you die. Then if you're religious, you either end up in a heaven state or in a hell state. This says a lot of things. First of all, you have finite time. Secondly, when you die, your body dies, a part of you is alive. And that third thing is this part of you can achieve eternal bliss or eternal chaos and misery. And the way it achieves any of these two things is bound by the uh, sort of the actions it takes in this life. Different philosophies have different um, ideas of death and afterlife. A lot of them have the idea that once you're dead, you're dead. You're either eternally, you know, blissed out in heaven, you know, you're chilled, or you're in hell eternally miserable for the rest of eternity, yada, yada, yada. You're punished for eternity. Um, other philosophies say, okay, no, it's not, it's not just linear, right? You don't just end up in one of these two binary states. You know, in some philosophies you have a, you go through what is called a bardo. Um, I think it's the Tibetans, uh, in Hinduism. And I think in Buddhism, the idea is you, you know, you reincarnate. Uh, so you go from one life to the next. So, you know, you're done with this one, you come back again and you do another one, another one, another one, and you keep going through lives right? You keep cycling back and each life is different. Each life you're born with a different level of intellect, different level of personality, different level of wealth, different level of connections, different level of everything, right? And so, you know, one of the other things about that is because you can't take anything material from your life here to your next life, you know, but you have eternal life. Um, can you take something like experiences? And apparently that's not the case and for for the majority right but people who apparently have past lives probably do speak to the point that maybe yes certain memories of your prior existence can leak into your current um incarnation right um but for the for the most part you, when you reincarnate you you don't have experiences but you probably have feelings and you probably have intuition Intuition is all those feelings and, and um, sort of the result of your previous lives put into one thing. So it's like a guide, right? It guides you life to life to life. Um, so you probably have intuition. You probably also have affinity for skill sets. Maybe you're good at math. Maybe you're good at science. Maybe you're good at meditation. Maybe you're good at um, uh, history. Maybe you're good at whatever, because in this view, in this view of reincarnation, each life, you know, you can develop a certain skill set, right? And I, or, and a skill tree, if you think about it like a game, as I've said before, and what I, what do I mean by that? Okay, so a mathematician will be studying math, math and more math, you know, they'll probably study a little bit of physics, they'll study a lot of other mathematical related things and probably spend the rest of their life in mathematical research, right? So mathematicians can be this way, and this is their skill tree. Engineers will study math, science, and the sort of the practicality of things, right? How to build things, how to design things, how to how to actually be an engineer, how to, you know, be an engineer. So that's their skills, uh, skill set, skill tree. Artists will take art classes and develop their artistic sense and inspiration and creativity. Um, what else? You know, entrepreneurs will develop their sort of um, people skill, innovation skills, technology skills, and foresight, right? so on and so forth. So these skill sets that you develop over each life probably gets condensed into your intuition for the next life. So when you are reincarnated, you know, if you're, say you're a music prodigy, maybe you've lived multiple lives where you just studied music, you know, maybe the piano, whatever it is that you study that you have an affinity for it when you're born. If that is the case, then what we can do is we can develop certain skill sets that can help us in all of our lives, right? Because if we think about it, if you're a musician, and the next life you incarnate into, you don't have, you know, pianos don't exist anymore, or, you know, there's been some sort of, you know, ban on pianos or something. Well, you know, you have to develop a new skill set, right? You have to deal with the, 
newness of it all and you have to develop something new in that life. So there are skill sets um, that you can develop in each life that'll help overall with the, with the entirety of your eternal lives, shall we say, which is what is bringing me to lucidity, right? So um, if you haven't heard about lucid dreaming or uh, meditations, welcome to the team. Lucid dreaming is the ability to be aware in your dream as you're dreaming real time. And then because you're aware, you can steer yourself, you can make decisions, you can, you know, think of the the dream world as like an ocean and you're sailing on it, right? And most people are very like passive and they're just taking where taking uh, going where the current takes them, the current of the dream takes them. Lucid people are like, oh wait, I can sail. I can actually change directions. That's what lucidity is. It doesn't necessarily mean you control the dream. It means you're aware of the dream as you're dreaming. And so this is something to cultivate because if you're more lucidly aware of things, then whatever else skill sets you're developing can come easier because you have more metacognitive ability, right? Uh, it's, it's the same for enlightenment. So if you develop enlightenment now in this life or even in partly this life, you can then again in the next life probably cultivate it more and more and refine it and refine it and refine it. So in eternity, what you're doing is you're refining these skill sets that are going to help you in all of your lives and all of your adventures and all the things to come, good, bad, worse, whatever it is. Um, which is probably, probably why you should also meditate because if you develop a sort of a calm Zen mind in this life, maybe in the next one, you can carry that through. So the idea is you're born, you die, you, you can reincarnate and you can bring skill sets or um, affinity to skill sets because of the time and effort and energy you put into them per life, right? Some people will just naturally have a skill set. Some people won't. Um, under the current scientific uh, understanding, you know, prodigies are born because of genetic mutations, right? It's an accident, it's a fluke. But under this very specific worldview, religious it, it may be, prodigies and people who are gifted are, they deserve it in one sense. They've been born into this sort of life because they've, in their past lives, they've developed these skill sets. And it might be complete BS, right? I mean, then what you're saying is people who suffer in, say, um, Africa, right? They're, they deserve it. It's not necessarily deserve, it's more so that maybe there is a component of luck involved. And I wouldn't deny that, right? Uh, a lot of times in my life I've gotten lucky and there's no genuine explanation. Maybe there isn't, right? Maybe the universe likes to gamble like that, which is fine. But from my perspective at this moment, my understanding at this moment, again, all of my perspective and understanding is bound to change at some point. It makes sense to study these things and take them seriously and to put energy and effort into them so I can become better at all these mini, mini games and all the big eternal game, right? So, you know, if you learn how to do breath control, right, breath meditation, next life when you're having like a panic attack, you'd be like, Zen out, right? You can learn all these other sort of fantastic skill sets, like just marvelous skill sets where you can calm your mind, where you can, you know, if you look at the Tibetan videos uh, um, on YouTube where they, where the, where the monks heat their, uh, heat the towels with their naked bodies, like, well, not that they're not naked, but with their bodies, like, it's insane. It's insane the things you can develop. So it makes sense to develop these skill sets in these ways to have these specific um, advantages in playing the eternal game. So um, everybody who's watching me, I want you guys to think about what skill set that you want to take from life to life to life. For me, the answer is very simple, lucidity and sort of mindfulness, right? Um, once I sort of have, or once as I'm cultivating those, those will spill into all the other skills that I'm going to develop or all the other things I'll do. And that'll be great, you know. Um, maybe I'll become a more calmer, nicer, gentler person, but still capable of defending myself, my ideas, the person that I am, and so on and so forth, and my family and all that. So again, think this through. What skill set do you want to develop? For me, lucidity, again, enlightenment, mindfulness, all of these things. And it sounds fun because it is fun, right? Because um, at one point, I'm going to end up dead, right? I'm a croak. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, I haven't figured out a way to avoid that yet. Um, eventually, I probably will. But for the time being, these skill sets 
should be developed and people who are uh, out there in the universe who are thinking in this sort of line in this way um, understand that maybe there is a possibility there is a chance that this is this is a good way of dealing with the game itself all right well enjoy the eternal game i'll see you guys in the next one bye